So I want to take some time to go over a Patreon poll. Um, by the time you see this, it's likely that if there's going to be a vote on Build Back Better, it will have already occurred. So just keep that in mind. But I wanted to gauge where my viewers were at when it comes to the performance of the Congressional Progressive Caucus overall. This isn't necessarily a temperature check on the squad or Pramila Jayapal or any one individual member, but just overall the collective performance of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. So here's what I asked my Patreon patrons. When it comes to negotiations regarding Build Back Better and bipartisan infrastructure, what are your feelings about the Congressional National Progressive Caucus's handling of negotiations. So this was conducted on November 6th. This is not a scientific poll, so keep that in mind, of course. So uh, we have one vote with one person saying that I'm very satisfied. We have two votes with somewhat satisfied. They could have done more. We have 17 votes with satisfied with some members, dissatisfied with others. And then we have dissatisfied overall, six votes. And I'm very dissatisfied. They did not fight hard enough with 23 votes. And then we have two people who haven't followed it. So I would find myself in this category. I'm very dissatisfied. They did not fight hard enough. Now, when it comes to the six members of the squad who voted against this, I believe that was uh, Jamal Bowman, Corey Bush, Ilhan Omar, Ayanna Presley, Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, and Rashida Tlaib. I'm... I'm fine with their performance. I think that they did everything that they could. But overall, if the Congressional Progressive Caucus is weak, then there's not much that those six individual members uh, can do, right? So it, it you're only as strong as your weakest link. And when you have almost all the links be really weak, then that's going to that's gonna be an issue. But let me get to some of the uh, comments here because uh, some of my patrons, they shared their reasoning here and their insight is really, I think, uh, informative. So Mr. Anderson says, watching it go from six trillion to three point five trillion to one point eight trillion, and now a measly one trillion with the Progressive Caucus praising Biden and bipartisanship with every major cut, I can't convince myself they put up any kind of a fight at all. And that's just it. I, I think that what makes matters worse for me is all of the praise that uh, is being heaped on Biden from individuals like Pramila Jayapal. She's just taking it too far, and she's declaring this a victory now again if build back better is passed and it's good then she gets credit for that we'll have to wait and see but i mean after she voted for infrastructure uh before the senate passed build back better i thought at that point that's that's bad and yet to kind of claim that you won is bizarre and you kind of look foolish because even in DC circles, when you see the articles, you have corporate Democrats commenting anonymously so about how they're really perplexed as to how progressive um, lawmakers don't feel like they got rolled. They did get rolled. I think objectively so they got rolled. Um, more on this. We have Dorian Gray 11 who says this entire situation is gross. What's the point of electing progressives if they can't hold the line and give President Joe Manchin everything he wants? Pathetic. This isn't compromise. It's utter capitulation. And see, this is something that is so important because what progressive lawmakers do affects the success rate in a way, I think, of 2022 progressives running for Congress. So anyone who I brought on my show now, you know, it, this lack of performance by the CPC, it hurts them because they think, yeah, what's the point? Why give my hard-earned money to these people who are just going to get in there and go along with the establishment? So that's why it, it, this is bad, not just from a policy standpoint, but because it really depresses the progressive movement. Uh, Joe Six says, rolling over and playing dead does not bode well for our democracy. Totally agree. Anna says, there are only a handful of progressives. They have the entire Republican Party as well as the corporate Democrats and media against them. Then there are racist, no hard people out there that continue to vote for them. The progressives can only yell so loud without support, and it doesn't help that Manchin and Cinema don't care about anything except putting money into their pockets. The whole corrupted system allows Manchin and Cinema to be the pieces of shit that they are. And look at the bullshit that happened to India Walton in Buffalo, New York. She got robbed from the Democratic Party. I still think we need to have that continued fight within us and show up to vote for progressives. Well said. Chris says, I voted very dissatisfied, but I do give six progressives that voted against the Build Back Better bill, or bipartisan infrastructure bill, rather, credit. Totally agree. Gina says, listening to Pramila Jayapal gushingly praise Biden, who hasn't done much to advance his own agenda, shows that progressives are far more concerned with career advancement in the Democratic Party than with actual progressives for the country. After all our hard work of getting progressives elected, we have to primary them to show them uh, we will withhold our votes. This, the system is corrupt, and we can only break the corporate duopoly by voting for alternative parties open primaries, ranked choice voting, and end the electoral 
college. So in order to actually have a viable alternative party, we need electoral reform first. And the conundrum is that to get electoral reform, we have to elect more progressives, but they're not going to be elected unless they run in the Democratic Party. So we're kind of in this unending cycle where you have these dominant parties and nothing really changes. Uh, what I will say is that I don't necessarily agree with primarying the progressives that are good progressives, but there's a lot of members in the Congressional Progressive Caucus that definitely need to be primaried. In fact, I don't even know why they're in the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Some people are in both the Congressional Progressive Caucus and the Problem Solvers Caucus. Um, or, or they were in the Problem Solvers Caucus, and that just shouldn't be acceptable. Like, you have to have standards to accept someone into, into the Congressional Progressive Caucus. Otherwise, it's going to be, you know, a weakened uh, unit where there's going to be disunity and, you know, they're going to be... Um, susceptible to rolling over to the establishment. Uh, Mari says, very disappointed in Representative Jayapal. She was not our pal this time. Yeah. Packer Cray says, most of us probably expected the eventual result and generally predicted just about all the steps that happened along the way. We knew the progressive wing would eventually do what they always do and fold when the when decision time arrived. If anything, it makes it, uh, it more frustrating to end up being right yet again about the fecklessness of the left in the halls of power. And that's the thing. The more that we don't score victories, the more that people begin to lose hope and check out. And, you know, that's that's really unfortunate because we need to stay engaged. But if you keep getting beat down time and again, and once you're on the ground, they kick you and spit on you, a lot of people... They don't take kindly to that. So, I mean, all of these responses here, I don't see how you can read any of these responses and think that they're unreasonable. Everything that they're saying here is rational and, and reasonable. I have the smartest viewers, by the way. Uh, Jacqueline Roberts says, I'm disgusted with the CPC except for our squad. They may get a little wobbly, but they do care and they do try. And I would agree with that, right? I criticize them from time to time. AOC's Iron Dome vote was a catastrophe. But overall, I do think that she is headed in the right direction, even if she missteps a lot, right? I, I think that Ilhan Omar is probably my favorite, maybe Rashida Tlaib. But yeah, I, I think that their heart is in the right place. They just showed us how much leverage they have, and we should be able to see that they need lots of new company, and there's so much good uh, they do that never gets covered. That's exactly it. Walid says, I thought more will come out of holding the line. I understand that what happens in public may be different from what happens in private in terms of negotiations, but voting on Biff bill without the reconciliation bill at the same time looks pointless from my vantage point. Some provisions have been added to the Biff bill but they are less than the minimum needed. For example, the current BIF bill has $15 billion for replacing lead pipes, even though $45 billion is needed. That is such a good point. That's such a good point. Uh, Christian LaSalle says, the fact that they held out this long was good, and I agree with that. Uh, and they probably could have done more media circuits going after Mansion and Cinema, but they should have kept holding the line. I think Pramila Jayapal accepting the framework was a show of naivete, and the Virginia results were the final nail in the coffin. Yeah, and I think that that does play a role. I think that kind of reading the room and knowing that she would be blamed and the left, more broadly speaking, would be blamed, Pramila Jayapal probably thought, I mean, we're, we're kind of fucked. So, you know, there's just overall a lot of disappointment. And again, I, I'm talking about this without information about the vote and how that goes because I'm recording this ahead of time. So maybe they'll prove me wrong. You'll know by the time you see this uh, if there was a vote. But, you know, overall, it's just it's really, really disappointing. And <laughs> it's hard to be a leftist. It really is. So uh, I want you to tell me what you want to see asked. Um, I can poll my Patreon patrons. We can poll our YouTube members. Let me know in the comments. What do you want to see? And uh, yeah, let's make this a common occurrence because I like these polls. I think it's important to gauge where the viewership is at. Um, not necessarily because what they say will direct what I'm going to do or say on this show, but because I think it's necessary to kind of um, see what other people are thinking who may not be glued to this as much as I am. But I mean, everything that they say is pretty lined up with me. Uh, we're all in lockstep. So I think it is important. So let me know what kind of poll you want to see. Girly Mike Fettuccini needs your support on Patreon. What a loser. Visit patreon.com slash humanist report to support the low ratings humanist report. Sad. My views are much higher.